Let's hear the voices see how far. Come on, raise your voice. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Lord, I've come, Lord. I've come to. Let's hear the voices alone for the last time. See how far. See how far you favored us. See how far you favored us. Oh, we've come to worship. See how far you favored us. He's blessed us. See how much He's blessed he us. Is blessed. Oh, 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 we give God all the glory. See how far He's brought us. See how much He's favored us. See the great things he's doing in our lives. Because of him, we're on the 14th day of our prayer and fasting, and we are still growing strong. Somebody say me, amen. amen. God has been good, hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time, we give him all the praise and all the adoration and all the worship. Somebody say me, amen. amen. If you had not been for him, was on our side. Where would we have been. Somebody say me, amen. amen. Never take your life for granted. Never take where you have got into in life for granted. It is just God. Some like you couldn't make it this far. Some just like you and I didn't even have the chance to breathe. As soon as we were giving birth to the, the past on their mother's bed, they were gone. Some didn't even have the chance to say that I like this or I like that. Some like you and I cannot even walk on their two feet. Some don't even have hands to praise the God. God, like you can raise your hands. You will see how much sometimes we bluff with even raising our hands. Some don't even have eyes to see how beautiful this world looks like. They don't have eyes to see. They only hear voices, yet they are so grateful. Some like you and I don't have ears to even hear the songs we sing, yet they are so grateful. So let me talk about see how much has brought us and see how much has favored us. Never look at the things you are believing God to do, the extra things you want and think that you are not favored. You have eyes you can see, ears you can hear, mouth to speak. You have a heart. You don't have an artificial heart that is pumping to help you. You don't have a pacemaker somewhere that is checking you. Somebody say me amen. But you have a complete heart that is functioning on its own. Can you give glory to God? There are many things he has done for us, yet we are so ungrateful. Because we look at others and we compare. And because we compare, we are never satisfied. But the word of God says, he that compareth is never wise. Somebody say me, amen. We give God the glory for your life. Hallelujah. You can take your sister in the Lord's presence. We give God the glory for the 14th day of our prayer, 21 days of prayer and fasting somebody say me amen see how far and how much he's favored us hallelujah see how far he has brought us somebody say me amen god is good and all the time you are welcome this morning to king's Light chapel klc for short a word-based holy ghost filled multicultural and racially diverse church 
with a divine mandate to bring light to this dark world, hope to the hopeless, and to equip the child of God for mission and victory. KLC. KLC. 2024. 2024. Hey, some people are doing well, pal. Some people we are saying the month of entering July. No, but we are still struggling. 2024. 2024. We refuse to remain the same this year. I don't know about you, but me, I refuse to remain the same. Every aspect of my life has to change. Somebody say me, amen. Hallelujah. I should grow high in spiritual things. I should count some dollars this year. Some dollars have to enter my account. Somebody say me, amen. This year, my business has to flourish. Somebody say me, amen. This year, my hands are extraordinarily blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Anything I touch is magnified. Anything I do is multiplied. Somebody say me, amen. This year is my year to shine because I am covered in the glory of the Lord. When you see me, may you see the glory of the Lord. When you see me, may you see that God has highly favored me. And that also is your portion. When you see, may you know that God is doing a new thing in my life. Somebody say me, amen. Because it says, behold, I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? Somebody say me, amen. I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Somebody say me, amen. It is your time to shine because you are covered in the glory of the almighty God. Somebody say, amen. I him for this morning. Hallelujah. Go oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Amen.
somebody say me amen. amen oh for a thousand tongues to sing my great redeemer's praise hallelujah do you have a thousand tongues to sing his praise do you have a thousand tongues to say thank you do you have a thousand tongues to say the lord i'm grateful for what level i've reached in life do you have a thousand tongues to say father thank you for taking me through 14 days of fasting and prayer do you have a thousand tongues to say lord i am grateful for how far you have brought me you have a thousand tongues to say that lord no matter what it is i will still serve you i love you with all my heart lord and no matter what lord i want to sing your praise and say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord for my family thank you for my husband thank you for my wife thank you for my children you have a thousand tongues and father thank you for my parents thank you for my family you have a thousand tongues to say lord i will sing your praises no matter what i will continuously sing your praises then if you do say me amen in the house amen. a bigger amen will do amen. and your loudest amen, amen. I'm, am i hearing amen in this row am i hearing amen in this row and I'm, am I hearing amen in the house? Amen. amen. God bless you all. This choir will give us a song. Amen. amen.
amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you clap for them? Amen. And Brother David and the technical team, make sure you fix the microphones before Apostle takes over, and especially the lead mic. Amen. Yeah, so it sound better. Hallelujah. Because on Friday, Rachel was on fire. Amen. Today, we couldn't hear her voice well, so I think it's from the microphones. So please make sure that it's well-tuned. Somebody say me, amen. amen. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And highly favored in the house. Somebody say me, amen. amen. Can you clap unto the Lord, people of God? A better clap offering will do. Hallelujah. It's God alone in our lives. Somebody say me, amen. It's God alone. It's God alone taking us higher and taking us places in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 14th day of our prayer and fasting and see what the Lord has done. Somebody say me, amen. amen. People of God, can you rise to your feet even as we receive Apostle Dr. Daniel Ayama ready with a feast from heaven for you and I. Somebody say me, amen. amen. Can you wave your hands unto the Lord? If you believe that it's God alone. to Jesus and please take your seats let's clap for the choir come on let's clap for the choir hallelujah no you didn't clap enough I said let's clap for the choir if you didn't stand up here to sing but somebody sang appreciate them put your hands together and honor them amen amen and amen now I want to draw your attention to the fact that you are sitting in exactly half end of the first half of 2024 come on can you give god the praise can you give god the praise yes amen now listen at the beginning of the year you cry to god and say lord take me to 2024 he's brought you halfway through but, but I have good news for you. His name is Alpha, and his name is also Omega. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. Somebody say me amen. Somebody say me amen. Now, how many believe that God is taking them all the way to the end? Then let me hear a clap and a shout in the house. Let the clap and the shout show that you believe that he will take you there he will take you there he will take you there he will finish the year with you in the name of jesus praise the name of the lord hallelujah now uh like mommy rightly said just before we um just before we i took over we are on the 14th day of our fast and I want to find out whether for you it is 14 over 14. Or some of you it is 7 over 14. Some of you it is 4 over 14. And the only thing that I don't understand in this world is that this stomach has been busy all your life. Taking in food all the time. Why is it that on the occasion that it is a fasting time, you still would choose to keep this stomach busy? why that is one thing i don't understand the only answer i have for it is that 
the devil is trying to work something out of you. And I want to uh, use this opportunity to appeal to all. And I'm appealing to the men in the house. Let your voices be heard on a prayer line. Gallants of Christ. Gallants of Christ. If we are strong, powerful, and anointed, it should show in the midst of 21 days of fasting. Remember, the men are the priests, the kings, hallelujah, and the prophets of their home. And so however busy you are, however busy you are, you have to make time. And let me tell the men this very quickly. You, you are praying for both yourself, then your wife, then your children, and their future. So 21 days, you cannot joke. You cannot joke. I don't know if there's any wife who receives prayer than my first lady, Barbara. Because when I go into prayer, I call her name. I pray for her. That is my territory. By the grace of God, God has made me a pastor, so all of you have become my territory. But my wife is the first person. Somebody say me, amen. Oh, come on. And, and let me tell you my greatest joy. This is a side issue. My greatest joy is that whilst we are still in this fast, and the fast is not over, on July the 6th, we'll be 28 years in marriage together. If you didn't clap, you are very jealous. The way you sat down quietly, your jealousy is showing too much. Maybe you wanted to hide it, but it showed. Say me amen. Now, so let me say this. Any man here, don't tell me I come to pray, but I don't mention my name. It is wrong. If every man chose not to mention their names, who will mention their name? Then there will not be anybody. I'll be on the line with ghosts. And so I want you to mention, this week, I want you to mention your name so I know you came. And I'm challenging the gallants. But not only the gallants, I'm challenging the entire church to come on the line, let us pray. Now, please look at me. I've got a couple of things to tell you, and I'll share the word, and I'll be out of your way uh, as quickly as possible. I want you to know, and I want you to take note of this. There are many evil activity in the spirit. Evil, evil, evil. In case you don't know, the Bible says that we have an adversary who is the devil. How many know that we have an enemy? You have a, not just an enemy, you have a sworn enemy. An enemy who has sworn that whatever happens, you will not do well. But that enemy must be silenced. And it doesn't come by the power of American dollar. It comes by the power of prayer. Oh, come on, give God the praise. Anytime, listen to me, anytime I told you stay out of prayer, you are staying out of something that is so critical for your survival. Praise God. I taught the junior youth that this body eats uh, KFC, McDonald's, um, what? I can hear Chick-fil-A. Chinese food, Greek, whatever. It eats fufu, banku, and all that. That is your physical body. All right? Now, but let me say this. Let me say this quickly. Praise God. Let me say this quickly, that your spirit man doesn't eat any of this. Your spirit man. I say your spirit man. But let me, let, me, let me just make sure that you get this straight. The world is ruled from the spirit realm, not the physical. And the physical, the, the, the physical is always limited, but the spiritual is unlimited. That is why, I hope you are looking at me. I hope you can hear me. That is why somebody can call your spirit into a pot, put a knife on it, and in that pot, you're already dead. 
because spiritually you have been killed and they're just waiting for the day when it will manifest in the physical. So the person doesn't have to come to you personally and hold a knife on you. That is how limited the physical realm is. Because the person must come within shooting range to be able to harm you. But in the spirit, the person can be even in China, can even be in a village in Africa, and will apply spiritual way to kill you, and you will be killed if you are available for consumption. Somebody say me, amen. So the spirit controls the physical. And so when we are fasting and we are praying and you are not praying enough, you show lack of understanding of how the world operates. And even though I'm an apostle, that God uses me to do mighty things, everybody in my household knows that when it is time for prayer, I don't play with it. Because I know what the prayer can do. This week, I challenge you to come on board. I had an amen from here. I didn't hear it from there and there. This week, I challenge you to come on board. Amen. We'll pray five times a day. But remember, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. Don't tell me you are praying alone. You must join the other forces so that our prayer can explode. Somebody say me, amen. amen. Tell the person by you, I will join you. Please join me. Oh, some of you are not saying it. Tell the person by you, I will join you. So please join me as we fight together this week. Oh, if you believe that we are going to succeed this week, clap your hands and shout unto God. Clap your hands and shout unto God. Amen. Now, for your information, just for your information, the Lord told us at the beginning of the year that 2024 is going to be a tough year. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. There's going to be sudden deaths, sickness and disease. How many have seen it in this year? How many have seen it? Now, so when we get to it, a chance to do the second half, shouldn't we do it with a lot of strength? I want to ask that this week, put everything aside. Put, I said what? Put every single thing what? Spend time with God. Give this stomach a break. It's even healthy for your body. When I say a break, I didn't say you shouldn't eat at all. Give it a holiday. So that morning, afternoon, it is free. Then the evening you eat. So that this body can detoxify. Somebody say me, amen. I challenge this church. I challenge the ministers of this church. I challenge the deacons of this church. I challenge the men of this church. The women of this church. Come, let us pray. Come, let us seek the face of God. Come, let us believe God for mighty things in the spirit. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. In the midst of our fasting, we are running into the name of the Lord. Somebody say me, amen. Now, let me tell you, the, the boldest person you find on the surface of the earth, the boldest person is the person who doesn't want to pray. They feel that they can control tomorrow. Me, I am the meekest. When they are praying, you see me praying like a child because I believe that without him, I can do nothing. Maybe some of you believe that without him, you can still succeed. Then you can go ahead. But if you are in the mood where I am, when you hear the prayer line time is up and it, it shows on the was that pay? Jump on it with humility, knowing that without him, you can't make it. I know that without him, I can't make it. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can somebody clap and give Jesus praise? I, this week, I just want us to break our fast around four o'clock. You know why? I don't want many people to say they are discouraged, they can't go further. So I'm making it easy. Very easy. Now, typically in Ghana, I've never done 21 days breaking at 12 or 1 or anything before. No. It's 6. But in America, we have to titrate and arrange. If you want to go higher than that, God bless you. But 4 p.m. By the time we finish the 3 p.m. prayer, you can go and 
give your, your stomach uh, a little attention. Somebody say me amen. Somebody say me amen. Now, I also want to say a couple of things. You can see that since I came here, I'm talking only about the fast because we're in the final week and I don't want to give room to the devil at all. Let me show you something that we're about to do this week. Even though every morning we pray from 6 to 7, now I'm extending to 6 to 8. People will pray in the morning. You just, when you wake up in the morning, fire. Somebody say fire. Just fire, fire, fire. Just be praying in the morning. And I want you to know that there are some things in the spirit that your eyes cannot see. But they are being destroyed because you are in the fasting and you are praying. Oh, if I heard amen, then it means you understand what I'm talking about. Somebody said, the Bible said that submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. This week I declare that the devil shall flee from you. He shall flee from you. So 6 to 8 in the morning, there will be prayer. You don't have to be praying 6 to 8, no. You come on 6 to 6.30, 6 to 7. I, this, let's clap for this church. In the morning, some people come there and they are hungry. Come on, clap, clap, clap and give God a praise. This time, the only thing we are asking is join the bandwagon. 6 to 8 in the morning, we are fasting, we are praying. I want to thank God for the life of the prayer leaders. They've done mighty. Let's, let's pray for them. Let's, let's clap for them. The leaders of prayer. The morning prayer chain. I'm just coming to that right now. Thursdays and Fridays. Thurs every Thursday, we eat only fruits overnight. You haven't done some before. This time, do some. Tell the person by you, do some. You will not die. You just eat fruits overnight. We have done it without the food itself before. But this time, it's only fruits. Somebody say me, man. Tell the person, fruits, fruits, fruits. Hello. Hello. And it's not for all the fasting. It's for only Thursday <laughs> into Friday. Say me, amen. May I announce very quickly. You see that all you've heard me talk about so far is the fasting. You know why? You know why? Because I know if you do it well, we will get great results. The prayer leaders have done the prayer chain every Thursday and every Friday. Please pay attention. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., there is a fiery prayer chain. I wish we can make it even up to 12 noon. But we don't have candidates. By the time we finish the service today, I'll see if we can have candidates for it. They will pray and pray and pray. And when I come on the line, they remind me so much of Ghana. Uh, Sister Lucy's and Sister Nance of this world and Sister Rose's. I mean, prayer is going on. And I give God a praise. Let's clap and give Jesus praise. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I challenge every man and woman in this place. Join the prayer chain. Join the prayer lines. Join the prayers in the morning. Let us pray. The prayer you are praying is taking care of business in the spirit. In Jesus' name. I don't want to scare you, but there are some people who arrive in America without visa and without passport. But they come by Inframa Airlines. And when they arrive here, they arrive here to come and do evil. But by the time they come and you are in a fasting in the prayer, they will report back to the headquarters that there was too much fire in that house. Or I thought you heard me. They will say that, hey, when we came, angels were standing at the door and fire was burning all around the house. And we could hear a woman in the house. We could hear a man in the house praying. We couldn't do our thing. I declare that all witches and wizards sent to your house will return back without any results. I, if, if I get some witness here, if, if I hear you clapping and shouting, Somebody say me amen. Finally, these are instructions from apostle for the fast. Finally, if you are quarreling with somebody, settle with the person. If you are owing God in tight, pay it. If you have any sin in your life, remove it out of your life so that this week a new air will blow across our lives. Oh, come on, somebody say me amen. You want to know the secret of my anointing? 
Anybody who even wishes me down for, one of the things they can never do to me is to let my anointing leave me because I fear God. And I want, to, I want to walk with God. And so those people, they have missed already because as for me and God, till the day I breathe my last breath, I am with him. Amen. Somebody say me, amen. And so if you are quarreling with somebody, forgive them. Can, can you tell somebody, but you just forgive, tell the person, but you just forgive them. The, the, some of you, your heart, is, your heart is hard. Though. Even the way you said it is like, huh. I possibly don't know what they have done. Tell the person by you, just forgive them. Let them go. Let them go so that your prayer will be answered this week. The Bible says that if you are going to offer sacrifice and you see that you have an issue with your brother, you should go back. Leave the sacrifice at the altar. Go back. Settle with the person and come back and offer the sacrifice. There are some believers who can finish prayer right now and eye you when they are going away. Their prayer is not heard. There are some believers who can, who can, um, who can finish uh, activity in house or after service, see you and walk away without looking at you because they are angry with you. This is the reason why many prayers are not answered. But I have special people who are always bringing their prayer to me. People in echelons of power in our country, Ghana. People who control the nation. I pray for people who control things. And the prayer is answered because when you hurt me and I feel the pain, I tell God to help me to forgive you. And so do the same. This week, you will see the hand of God. If I don't tell you these things, what I know is that Christian people will come and say, ba, 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 ba. even in a prayer, they look at people, they can even eye them and continue prayer. Please. That kind of Christianity, I don't know where it came from. Change your ways. Be honest with God, and God will bless you. Can we clap and give Jesus praise? You have been working. You ask God to give you a job. You have been working for so long, but when it gets to your tight, you find it so difficult to give it away. But in the fasting time, you're asking God to give you another job. you the same person who has not been faithful with your tight. You are still asking, give me, new, give me new money. New money for what? So settle things with God so that God will also look towards your direction. These things I'm telling you, they are very simple. Very simple. But if you understand them, you will do well in the faith. Oh, say me amen. Now my amens are coming only from this side. Somebody say me amen. amen. Uh, wherever the money is, if it's your account, go and give it to God. I want to repeat this to everybody else. You don't give tight, you pay tight. Because you pay it like the way you pay an electricity bill at home. If you don't pay, dominion will cut you off. Yeah, I don't think you heard me yet. If you don't pay, Dominion will do what? Mm -hmm. Washington gas will cut you off because you, have, you must pay. Uh, tell the person, but you must pay tight. You don't give it. Tell the person, you must pay. That is why anybody who doesn't pay tight is called a robber. If the thing is yours, why would you call a robber? The thing is not yours. It belongs to God. It's a covenant you have with God. And so a tenth of your income belongs to who? I, I want to hear the church. A tenth of your income belongs to who? God bless you. Now, my duty today is very simple. I'm going to share a brief word. Uh, 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 Sister Ruth, can we get the, um, the promo going, please? Kings Light Chapel International Incorporated presents Media Convention 2024 to mark the end of Media 21 Days Fasting. Theme, the anointing is the game changer. Acts 10 and the verse 38. Host, Reverend Mrs. Barbara Arma, First Lady of the Kingslide Chapel International Incorporated. Are you standing up for Jesus everywhere you find yourself? Are you standing up for the Lord in your offices? Or when you're in the office, don't want them to even know you are a Christian, a believer. Speaker, Apostle Dr. Daniel A. Arma, God's anointed servant. Irrespective of all you do in life, Make time for your gift. Ministry at the KLC Mass Choir, Minister AJ, 
Reverend Clarence DeMarcus Roberts and Minister Lydia Nyadia Siako. Happening Thursday the 11th to Friday the 12th of July 2024 at 7.30 p.m. each night. Sunday, July 14, 2024 is a major impartation and Thanksgiving service at 10 a.m. Venue is the Sheba Temple, 14348 Richmond Highway, Woodbridge, Virginia, 22191. It will also be live on Facebook and YouTube at King's Lights Chapel. Expect fireworks. Come and be blessed. Can we give God a praise? King. Okay, so I'm preparing you for the last season. A couple of things and then I'll share a very brief word and we are done. Please pay attention. Over 95% of testimonies we receive in this church comes from our own internal programs. Can you clap? And come on. Oh, you are not clapping properly. We have miracle babies walking in the midst of us here. It came from internal. Now, it means that any time at all there's a convention that a speaker is an apostle, the host is the first lady, somebody in this house is about to receive a testimony. If you didn't clap, I will not continue. You better clap and honor God for what he has done in this church. Thursday the 11th, Friday the 12th, and Sunday the 14th, I don't know what will happen, but I just know that somebody's life shall never, ever be the same again. This church is about to be visited from heaven. Great grace is about to be poured upon the church. Mighty men and women will rise from this ministry. The power of God will do mighty things. And I want you, all you have to do, and the ushers should help me at this time, at the time we are about to finish, April are about to go, to get flyers for this. All you have to do is to bring three more people to this house. If you obey that, the anointing will hit you, and your life shall never be the same. Tell the person by you, only three people. Tell the person. Amen? Only three. Tell the person, only three. Three more people should follow you to this service, and you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. Say me, amen. Say me, amen. Say me, amen. All right? Turn your Bibles with me now to the book of Acts chapter 12. I want to read the first 10 verses. And I'm speaking on a topic we began last week. How <laughs> many remember the topic? It is still possible. Tell somebody about you, it is still possible. Tell somebody about you, it is still possible. Praise God. Praise God. It is still possible. It is still possible. It is still possible. It is still possible for you to conceive. It is still possible. You can still give birth even though your age is old. I, I, I need some, some witnesses in the house. I said it is still possible. It is still possible for you to get that job. It is still possible for you to enjoy that business. It is still possible. It is still possible. Shake somebody and tell the person it is still possible. It is still possible. I need the entire house to come into attention. Tell somebody it is still possible. You can still overcome. You can still move forward. It is still possible. I said it is still possible. It, it, it is still possible for the issue against you to be overturned. It, it is still possible. It is still possible for your children to do well. It is still possible for your marriage to do well. I need witnesses in the house. It is still possible for you to move forward. It is still possible for you to break that record. God is still working on your case. It is still possible. Father, bring us a word in season. Nourish our hearts. Touch our souls. Lead us in the way we should go. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. And somebody shall say me, Amen. It is still possible. It is still possible. Let's read. We're going to read 10 verses. 
we may just be able to do a few because I have a short time to preach today under our circumstances. Let's go. Now, about that time, no, I can't hear you reading. Should I make you stand for us to read? Please, they read with me. Let's go. I hear these two rows, not this one. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him in turning after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Let's read on. But Peter was therefore kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came and smote Peter on the side. Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. Let's go. And the angel said unto him, Get thy and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Praise God. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. First and second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and fought with, and the angel departed from him. Can somebody clap and give Jesus praise? Put verse 9 on the board. Today I came to declare the word of the Lord that it is still possible. I said it is still possible. I said it is still possible. What the doctor said cannot happen, can happen. What the lawyer said cannot happen, can happen. What they said you are too old for, it is still possible for you to achieve it. Oh, somebody say me amen. What they said you are too young for, it is still possible for you to achieve it. I see you breaking through. Who is the one I'm talking to? Today, if you are here to hear the word of God and to receive it, show it by demonstration. I see you breaking through. I see you moving forward. I see you walking out of situations that they said was impossible. I see you doing well. I see you breaking through. I see the glorious light of heaven shining upon your life. I see God showcasing you in the name of Jesus. It shall be said that this is the doing of the Lord. It is marvelous in our sight. It is still possible. It is still possible. It is still possible. It is still possible. What they said the color of your skin cannot achieve in the United States of America, it is still possible. Oh, hallelujah! I see somebody rising who is the one I'm talking to. I see somebody promoted for promotion does not come from the east, it doesn't come from the west, it doesn't come from the south, it doesn't come from the north, it coming from above, from the father of lights, in whom there's no variableness nor shadows of turning in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. I came to let you know that God is about to shock the world around you. I had an amen from here. I prayed to that place. God is about to shock your enemies. God is about to shock your friends. 
It's about to shock your family. The next time they see you, dressed by God, arranged by God, put together by God, structured by God, they will say, hey, what are we seeing? It shall be the doing of the Lord. It is marvelous in our sight. I don't think you heard me. If you heard me, I said, God is about to shock the world around you. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I declare in the name of Jesus that God will shock you. Sometimes in our lives, pay attention to this. Sometimes in our lives, we may be ushered into some kind of prisons. That by some reason immobilizes us and puts us in a difficult situation. Peter, the acknowledged head of the church at that time, was put in prison. So don't be surprised if something around you enters into a prison experience. Praise God. Praise God. The prison of Herod is a terrible place to be. Peter was placed there. But let me tell you what is even interesting. I don't know what Herod was afraid of. But he put four quaternion of soldiers around him. There's a shift of four soldiers around Peter all the time. And as if this was not enough, they placed chains on his feet. Kept him in a dark room and had guards around him. Now... The, the picture I'm painting to you, please listen to me carefully, is a picture of an impossibility. There is no human way by which Peter could come out of that prison. And I'm speaking to somebody who is in a circumstance that there's no human way by which they can come out. And when you think, you analyze, you put pen to paper and begin to think of how you can come out, there is no human way out. But today I come in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I come in the name of the God of possibilities. I come in the name of the God who said I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I come in the name of Rufaka, my God. That sickness can be healed. I come in the name of Adonai. That situation can be brought under control. I hear his voice saying, peace be still to any storm you are going through. In the name of Jesus. I thought you heard me somewhere. I came with the voice of the king. The king of kings. The lord of lords. The great I am. The heavens is his throne. The earth is his footstool. Mighty God. Miracle worker. I came in the name of the powerful king on the surface of the earth. And I came to declare that that which looks impossible is still possible. <laughs> oh, I thought to him, I said it is still. I said it is still. I said this is still possible. Now, why is this still possible? It's because of the one who can handle it. Because with him, nothing is impossible. With him, nothing is impossible. And so I speak to any padlock. Holding anybody here right now. Demonic padlocks. I speak to any prison. Any door that the enemy has opened. In the name of Jesus. To put you in a place of distress. In a place of pain. Church. The reason why you found me at the beginning of this message. When I spoke about you giving yourself to the prayer. Is that the church at that time had a bad experience. What was their experience? James was caught, and, and uh, James, the brother of John, praise God. The Bible says that when he was caught by the grace of God, with the church still sitting there, not doing anything, before they could say Jack, he was killed. Church, when we sit quiet, when you don't join the prayer chain, when you don't join the prayer time, and you sit aloof. That is when the enemy gets a chance to touch some things. Touch your children. Touch your marriage. Touch your health. Touch your body. Today we declare, may the hands of the enemy be taken off. I, I don't think you have. If you said amen, then you are really with me. I said, may the hands of the enemy be taken off. May his hand be broken. 
Break down the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until thou find none. Today I declare the hand of the enemy broken over your life in Jesus' name. Uh, if I heard amen, you are the one I'm talking to. I said, may the hand of the enemy be broken over your children, be broken over your marriage, be broken over your business, be broken over your outgoing, your incoming. In the name of Jesus, I declare that whatever Satan is touching now, may the fire of prayer in the name of Jesus settle the matter. May the fire of prayer settle the matter. Hey, I said may prayer settle it. I said may prayer settle the matter. Once between twice shy. And so when they realized that Peter has also, had also been taken, they said we're not going to sit down. Lift up a right hand and say I'm not going to sit down. There are some things getting rotten in your family. There are some things, maybe your children are not going the way they should go. Maybe your marriage is not going the way it should go. Maybe your business is not going the way it should go. Some things are getting rotten in your life. You're not going to sit down. Somebody say, I'm not going to sit down. People of God, what you don't get is that the first thing we are doing, the future of your children are at stake. The future of your family is at stake. The future of your marriage is at stake. Because the enemy is ruthless. When he realized that, that the church was sitting down, he killed the guy with a sword. But when they saw that another attack had come, they said affliction shall not take place a second time. And they stood up and began to pray. You know, the way they prayed is interesting to me. Please put verse 4 on the board. And uh, I believe I'm taking you somewhere. Let's go. And when he had apprehended him, let's go. And deliver him to four quaternions of soldiers. Four soldiers, group of four. Sixteen soldiers. And the Bible said to keep him in ten after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now add five to it. Peter was therefore... Oh, you better read with me. Please read with me. But prayers were offered unto God by the church for him. Now, when they said prayer without ceasing, you know what it means? It means that when the church woke up early in the morning, Oh, Lord, deliver Peter from the hands of Herod. Mid-morning, they were praying. Afternoon, they were praying. Evening, they were praying. Nighttime, they were praying. Midnight, they were praying. Dawn, they were praying. If you see us praying five times a day, it is even short. It is small. Because prayer must be offered without what? Ceasing. I didn't get any. Uh, prayer was offered by the church unto God. Without what? Ceasing. The prayer didn't cease. Some of you, five minutes, you haven't done it. And you want demons to run away. You want your marriage to be given to you on a silver platter. You want your children to do well on a silver platter. The Bible said that since the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom suffered violence. But the violence shall take it by force. If you want the kingdom to be delivered unto you, you must take it by force. So whenever you see, when we are in a prayer, sometimes I'll take an akimbo position. And when the whole church is praying, I say, Abapaya, Rabakata, Rabasai. I want the kingdom to be delivered unto me. And I know it shall not come on a silver platter. And so I have come to receive what belongs to me. May you receive the spirit of boldness. May you receive grace to fight a good fight. May the Lord teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight. In the name of Jesus. I said, what they said is impossible in America shall be delivered unto you by prayer. I said, it shall be. I, I, I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know the process by which God will do it. But I know that if somebody is praying, God will pray through for us. It, it reminds me of the song that says, I don't know how. I don't know when. 
but he'll do it again. I know that God is about to do something in your life. You believe it, shout and say me amen right now. God is about to do something. Single women, you are about to walk down the aisle. Uh, you are about to go viral, viral, viral with your marriage. I thought you had me. I know that some blessings are coming your way. But we have an adversary. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I came to let you know the way to deal with the enemy is by the power of prayer. Rise up and pray. Rise up and call upon the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Anybody who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> The Bible says that they fill the heavens with prayer. I want King Slide Chapel. Do you know what I want us to get to? I want us to get to 24 hours of prayer chain. Mahanda, sir, Libra, and the Keteria, Bazini, Anuma. The rest of America can be going to work and come back. But in the spirit realm, it shall be known that a church is standing before God in prayer. And that we are not allowing it to go. We are saying that, oh God, hear us and do it for us. Listen, what is interesting in this story is that whilst they kept praying and filling the heavens with prayer, God was moving on their behalf. On one side were desperate disciples calling upon God. On the other side were angels flying to bring the miracle. I declare that whilst you are praying this week and you are sweating in pain, and your body is weak and, and, and it looks so much like there is nothing coming out of it. On the other side, God will be plotting a miracle beyond human compare. How many are ready to receive their miracles this week? How many are ready to receive it? 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 Listen. The Bible says something that is interesting. The Bible says that whilst the prayer was going on, having arranged, orchestrated, put together a very powerful prison escape, <laughs> hallelujah, operation. You know, I declare that the jail of sickness you find yourself in may even orchestrate a jailbreak experience for you. You walk out of the prison. I, I said you walk out. Anybody who said amen, I prophesy to your life. You walk out of that prison. You will walk out of that In the prison, Peter was in chains. But he walked free. You are about to walk free. Oh, I thought, I thought, you, I said you are about to walk free. I said you are about to walk free. In the name of Jesus. What they considered impossible shall still be possible in your life. Now, listen, nobody has seen anybody coming out of Herod's prison before. You escape from Herod's prison by what means? Herod himself has got an iron gate. That even if you come out of the cell, there is a gate that is made of iron. Today, I address foundations. I address families. I address limitations. I address iron gates. That are standing so tall over people to limit their movement and their coming out of situations. And I come in the power of prayer. And I come in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I come in the name of the power of God. For at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. May the gate you are confronted with bow now. Bow. Oh, come on. I say, may he bow, may he bow, may he bow. Some of you, you have been kept in a cage. Mehende sa. Luale Mahaziki, Kuru Muzaria. I have seen things in this ministry work. I have seen things that are considered impossible. But by the power of prayer, we approached it and it became possible. This week I declare in the midst of prayer, may you see the impossibility become possible in your life in Jesus' name. Those of you who have my book, Seven Effects of Prayer. In this book, 
I show things that happen when we pray. I'll only give you two. And I'll take my seat. And I pray that on Friday night, when we come back, you'll hear more from God. I want that verse now on the board, but now put me to verse 7. And I'll say something with you. Tell the person, but you get ready for God. I said, get ready for God. The Bible says, whilst they were praying, and today I came to let you know that whilst you are praying, whilst the prayer is still going on, whilst you are still, you don't have to speak in the tongues I speak. I just use it as a demonstration. But maybe you say, oh God, touch my family, touch my children, touch my husband. In the name of Jesus, as I pray now, you are the one that is a controller of the universe. Stretch forth your hand, oh God, and make a difference in his life. I call on you, oh God, the God who answers by fire, Answer me by fire, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. As you stay in that prayer, as you believe in that prayer, as you continue in that prayer, something is about to happen to your life. Bible says, and behold. Somebody say, behold. The angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in the prison. And he spoke Peter on the side. And raise him up saying, arise up. Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hands. In this verse alone, there are three effects of prayer there. I'll throw them at your lap and then we'll close. The Bible says an angel appeared in the prison. Who are angels? Are there no ministering spirits sent by God to help the heads of salvation? Listen to me. It was the effect of the prayer of the disciples that caused an angel to be dispatched into the prison. Today I declare an angel in your prison. If you understood what I said, you will clap and you will shout. Today I declare an angel in your prison. An angel, oh, I am so secretary. I pray for an angel in your prison. Wherever your prison is located, may an angel appear there. <laughs> So one of the things that God will do for you when you start praying is that God will dispatch an angel into your situation. Are you hearing me? God will release an angel. Today I pray that may your address be located from heaven. Uh, hey, 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 hey. I said may your address be located from heaven and may an angel be dispatched to your location, to your location, to your location. Now, there were many places angels could go. But the angel went to Peter's prison. There were prisons in Herod's palace or whatever. But it was only in Peter's prison that the angel appeared. Because prayer was being offered for him. Today I declare, in the midst of your prayer, an angel shall be dispatched. Yes. And let me tell you something. Whenever you see that there's an angel, it means that help has come. Because who are angels? Are they not ministering spirit sent by God? To help the health of salvation. This week in the midst of your prayer, help is coming to you. Anybody who clap and said amen, I declare help is coming your way. I declare help is coming your way. I, I declare help is coming your way. The, the Philistine king told David that you have become like an angel unto me. It means that when it comes to angelic activity, it can either be a celestial being sent your way, or a human being burdened by God to help you. They are both angelic experiences. I don't think you heard me. So, in the midst of your prayer, somebody will become so burdened and say that, I want to help you out of this matter. May somebody appear to help you. I thought you heard me. Hey, as we pray, far away from us, may your fire come up. May your name come up. May your issue come up. Hey, are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus. And somebody said that this name is, is, is resonating with me. I don't know what to do, but I feel like helping this person. May God bury somebody for your sake. This week, I declare the release of angels. I declare the release of angels. Your helper is coming. Hey, who is the one? Uh, if you stood up, 
if you shouted, your help is coming. I declare that this week, your angel is coming your way. I declare your angel is coming. I declare your angel is coming. Is coming to your address. Is coming to help you. Is coming to bring you out of that prison, of that situation, of that circumstance, of that pain that you are experiencing in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your right hand and say, I'm coming out. Hey, shout it for say, I'm coming out. Today I declare you are coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out of that trouble. You are coming out of that prison. You are coming out of that sickness. Out of that disease. Out of that trouble. Out of that tragedy. You are coming out. Somebody shouted to us and said, I'm coming out. Me, I'm coming out. I will not be like this. My end will not be like this. Say, I'm coming out. And I'm coming out with the help of an angel. Clap your hands and give God the glory. I said I'll do three, but I'll do two now. Because our time is up. Please put the scripture on the board. And when I ask you, just keep the scripture on the board for me, please. Whatever it is, just keep it on the board. Praise God. The Bible says that, and an angel came upon him. And then something else happened. Can we see it? A light shined in the prison. Do you know what it means? It means that Peter was sitting in darkness. Herod is wicked, though. There are some village demons that have chased you. They are wicked. Bah. They come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we come with fire. I said we come with fire. I said we come with fire. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that as soon as the angel appeared in the prison, light shone in the prison. Now, it means that when we are in darkness, how many of us can, please look at me, let me just say, if I explain this and you get it, we are done. Clearly, Peter didn't even know where the door was. He didn't even know where that, because they put him in darkness. He didn't see the way out of the prison. There are some of us here, where you are sitting now, you don't even know way of escape, how you can even come out of the situation. Confusion, no ayabasa. Today, I declare light in your prison. <laughs> hey, the next thing that happens when we pray, first one, angels are released. Second one, light shines in our prison. Today, I declare light in your prison. Do, do you know what light means? Light means illumination. Illumination means direction and insight. So suddenly, you will begin to understand what to do to come out of the situation. So now Peter, Peter said, hey, okay, this place has become bright. This is the door out. He didn't, look, I came to let you know that you are so confused as to where to pass or how to come out. Light is coming to you. Amen. This week may light, oh, I thought somebody had, this week may light come upon your head. May light shine in the midst of your darkness. I said the confusion is coming to an end. The misdirection is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus, direction is coming to you. Oh, I, I, I pray that you know, you know, David says, shall I pursue? And when I pursue, shall I recover? It means that I'm in dark about what to do next. But the Bible says that by the grace of God, light came to him. Today, I pray that light, every man here, may light come to you. Every woman here, may light come to you. May understanding come to you. Illumination come to you. May you understand which way to go. To come out of your situation. To come out of your circumstance. May you know the way out. May you know, hey, by the time we finish this fast, may you have the trick. In the name of Jesus, your life shall never be the same. Stand to your feet and clap and give Jesus praise. Lift up your hand towards heaven. Say, oh Lord, I believe it is still possible. It is possible with me to come out of this situation and to do better. Say, I believe it. Therefore, 
I pray for it. Say in the name of Jesus. Just as Peter came out of the prison of Herod, I am coming out today by the power of prayer. Clap your hands and declare I am coming out. Oh, come on, clap your hands and pray. We are in fasting and prayer. So prayer team people, when you hear prayer, you pick a microphone and you begin to pray. Clap your hands you know and pray. The man, Lord. You know the man. Clap your hands and pray. You're the God who opens doors. No man can shine. You know the man. No. I want to hear a hand clap and pray. A hand clap and pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Say, I am coming out. I'm coming out. I don't want it anymore. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. You're the God of everything. No man like you. No man like you. Jesus. Say, I am coming out. Clap your hands and say, I am coming out. No man like you. I am coming out. No man like you. I am coming out. You're the God of everything. In Jesus' name. Everybody lift up your two hands towards heaven. Father, I pray for everyone at the sound of my voice. Let the singles come out of singleness into marriage. Let those in financial troubles come out of financial troubles into abundance. Those who are looking for jobs, may the Lord bring you out of joblessness into a place of a job. Let those who are sick in their bodies come out of that sickness into a place of health. Amen. Those who are under demonic attacks, let them come out of that prison Amen. and let the name of the Lord be glorified. Amen. I prophesy that the same power that brought Peter out of prison, that power is bringing you out now. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and shout unto God. You are not the God dependent. Take your seat quickly, it's time for offering. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can be Hallelujah. by your plan. Amen. It's offering time. Oh, offering time. time. Offering time. time. All right, please. Ushers help around with envelopes and let's get our offerings ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. All right. If our offerings are ready, please let's be up on our feet. Shall we be up on our feet, church? And in the midst of singing, ushers will help us from the back all the way to the front. Come and give your offering. Amen. All right, let's go. All right, let's help from the back all the way to the front. Please, let's all be upstanding. All right, so if you are giving by Cash App Zell, please indicate it on the back of the envelope. It's very important. Thank you. Let's all be upstanding, please. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. There's a place for I'm a child of God. 
Yes, I am. Jesus died for me. Oh, he died for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Shall we pray over the offering? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to touch this offering bowls with a seed. Father, we are asking in the name of Jesus that as we go through this period, this season of fasting, O oh Lord, receive these offerings. Let it be hallowed in your presence, Lord. And by these also, Lord, may you cause a way out in the name of Jesus of every situation. May a light shine into every prison, O Lord, and show us the way. May angels be released for our sake, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this offerings. We pray that, Lord, bless them, receive it. Let it be good for the kingdom use in Jesus' name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. All right. We will receive our tithes as well. Uh, if you are here, you are giving your tithes, please be upstanding. We want to acknowledge that. If you gave it electronically in the course of the week, we still want to acknowledge that. Please be up on your feet. We want to receive it. And shall we have the ushers here, please? Amen. Shall we have an offering bowl here to receive the tithe? Amen. all right let's pray let's let's pray hallelujah father we thank you for this opportunity also to be tied us in your kingdom father you have commanded us when it comes to the tithe, and we have obeyed we pray the lord for every obedience that has been on that has been observed over here according to your word and according to your command father let, O oh God, your covenant promises be activated in our lives in Jesus' name. Receive this. Let it be hallowed in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please, if you have an envelope, bring it up front. Bring it up front. Bring it up front. Amen. Please, yeah, come in. Come drop it over here. Amen. God bless you. 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 Amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. Thank you, please. All right. And then also for our family offerings, you want to cash it up, you want to zell, please go ahead and do it for all the four families, for, for love, for peace, for joy, and for faith families. God bless you. And Ashburn also. Thank you. All right. Shall we receive the announcer, please? Um, who is scheduled for the announcements today? All right, shall we receive the announcer? Put your hands together as she comes. Oh, put your hands together for the announcer as she comes. Amen.
What's the problem? Oh, Bernice. No, but if the person is announced, the person knows. All right. God bless you. All right. God. Let me quickly highlight them. All right. Shall we take note of the following announcement now, and observe them? I've said this, and I want to say it again. Please, when we are in church, no movements. When we are sitting, everybody should be seated. I always say that I want to make sure that there's order in the house. And ushers have told you to arrange this and make sure it happens. No movements. Let's all take our seats and let's hear what we have that we can close. God bless you. Let's do it quickly and we'll be on our way. Upcoming programs, June 30th, crossover into July, July 6th, Mass Outreach, Mass Outreach slash 28th wedding anniversary of Apostle and First Lady. Amen. Amen. All right, July 1st, that is the last week of our mid-year fasting. Amen. July 7th, communion and healing service slash sacrifice on the altar. So please take note and prepare your sacrifices as such. July 7th also is the 27th wedding anniversary of Apostle and First Lady. Amen. 28th. Oh, what did I say? Sorry. It's 28th. My bad. 28th. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> July 7th. Hallelujah. Is the 28th wedding anniversary of Apostle and First Lady. Amen. All right. All right, July 11th, we have the 12th and the 14th mid year. July 12th, sorry. July 11th, 12th and 14th is the mid year convention. Amen. Amen. July 14th, all white impartation Thanksgiving service. Please take note. July 20th, Youth Day Camp slash water baptism. Amen. Amen. July 21st, celebration service slash health talk. Hallelujah. July 30th is crossover into August. Instruction for the 21-day fasting media um, fast. I think we have it on the platform. It's a long one, so please take note of that. Um, Ten recommendations for a very effective fast. I believe it's also over there. I'll take, go ahead and uh, read a Thanksgiving. There's a Thanksgiving offering from the Adi family. Uh, it is $100. Uh, thanksgiving service for nathan's birthday amen. amen put your hands together their scripture their scripture is psalm 139 verses 13 and 14 it says for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well amen thank you for your attention god bless you come on I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate. God bless you. Amen and amen. Now, I, uh, just a couple of things and then we'll be done. Um, uh, Oshes, please share the flyer on, uh, remember, this is a very pivotal service. It was supposed to be in Fredericksburg. It was canceled because of this um, this is the importance of this service, preparing us for the rest. Please let other ushers help. Share the flyer to people. Give it out to your friends and family. If you keep it at home and you don't sell it, it's an abomination. Amen. I need, I need a couple of things. Please share it to everybody. At least three for everybody to take it and to share it. Amen. Let's do it quickly, and we're going to get out of here. I'm looking for volunteers, at least six people, uh, who spend 30 more minutes to share flyers around the African shop and here before they go home today. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. Jesus is Lord on the throne. Whilst they are sharing, I want to see your hand. If you just want to spend, even if you want to spend five minutes, ten minutes, let me see by hands. God bless you. Let's clap for Minister Queen. Let's clap for Minister Tego. Are you clapping for them? <laughs> Young girls, when you get the flyer and you keep it at home, it's a sin. You have to give it to someone. Yeah. 
God bless you. I have two people. I want four more people. Volunteers who will just stand around the church here and invite somebody to our church and to our convention. Where are your hands? God bless you, Papa. Anybody who believes you are called of God, you must be doing it. God bless you, Papa. Let's clap for Papa. Yeah. Pamela, four. I, have, I want two more people. Let's do it quickly. Two. Two more people. God bless you. Before we go, my work is a lot, so bear with me as I... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bear with me. Today is a special service. That's why you see me giving a lot of instructions. I'm going to call um, times from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Because this is a very critical week for us. We must win this war. Say me amen. And so even though we have the old list there, I want to get a new list and beef it up. So act as if we are beginning afresh. From Thursday and Friday, it will be 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So when I call 6 to 6.30, you lift up your hand. I want the office staff to help me. And I want more men involved in this at this time. 6 to 6.30, you want to pray in the morning on Thursday and Friday. As for every day in the morning, between 6 and 8, is free for all. We are praying. So 6 to 6.30, lift up your hand quickly. Please, office staff, you have to stand before we can get it done. God bless you. I'm calling the names. Minister Queen, Brother Kingsley, God bless you. David Ahimfo, Millicent Edwards, Musu, Maureen Adi, New Kain, Florence. Hey, my son is in the house. Junior Lawson, I like your hand up. God bless you. I haven't seen you for a while. I've missed him and his sister. They appear together. I'm happy. Sister to seven. I'm waiting to see to those hands. Sister to seven. Lift up your hand, Papa. God bless you. I want you to pray. Papa, you have to be in the long prayer chain. I'm going to be with you on the phone, okay? God bless you. Papa, Neokai, Ruby. Josephine Paddy, Austin Anka, Caris. Caris, you have to go one hour. Amen. 7 to 7.30, let's go quickly. 7 to 7.30, Benis. Please, when you give your name, it gets to the time. Don't forget. Don't give us headache. Are you a I haven't seen Hilda for a long time. Am I, am I on air? Can somebody hear me? Am I still live? Ah, okay, so let, let me keep my comments. Lucy, God bless you. <laughs> any, hand, any other hand here? Justice America Ambassador. He also just dropped him from his ambassadorial duties. 732. Did I do 7, 7, 7, 7, 8? Tony or Dick and Tony, 